how is noise, receiver sensitivity and transmission speed related? Today I want to catch up on something. You simply need to know if you want to understand communication technology. Today we are going to talk about something fundamental in communication technology. I want to explain this relatively simple so that everyone can understand it. Many of us have certainly had the following experience with Wi-Fi or with mobile radio. With increasing distance to the base station we see two effects. First, the field strength received continues to decrease and at some point the connection breaks down. Second, we observe that the transmission speed, i.e. the amount of megabits per second is decreasing. We also find this effect with other systems, so these two things are obviously somehow related. And indeed, there is a fundamental physical relation that always applies to communication technology. I have used this physical relation many times. There are Excel tools for wave propagation in earlier episodes, experiments or even completely crazy estimate of how far mankind could reach out with radio waves in space. Among other things, the data transmission rate is calculated. Yes, that sounds a bit crazy, but it's based on solid physics calculations. Feel free to watch the videos. I will link them in the top right corner. We need to talk about receiver sensitivity for a minute. It doesn't really matter whether it's a radio receiver that receives a signal from an antenna or a cable receiver that receives a signal from a cable. We are now talking about the so-called physical layer, as a communication technology expert would call it. On this layer, the signals are always analog, regardless of whether they are electrical signals, radio waves or light waves. In all cases, the signals are transmitted from a transmitter to a receiver. And in any case, we must ensure that our signal is larger than the noise, only then we can decode it. On their way, the signals become weaker. In particular, when it comes to radio waves, their intensity decreases quadratically with the distance. At some point, the signal is simply too small for the receiver. That's the main effect. The signals are also distorted and superimposed by interfering signals, by the way, but this is not our topic today. But why can the receiver no longer receive the small signals at some point? Of course, the signals don't just go away. It's just because a receiver has an intrinsic noise, which is then stronger than the received signal. To put it correctly, we can say, the receiver still receives the signals, but it cannot decode them because its own noise is stronger. It is possible to calculate the intrinsic noise and for this purpose let's now take a closer look at the formula for this. This is the formula for calculating the receiver's inherent noise. Amazingly easy, isn't it? The equation contains the so-called Boltzmann constant, the absolute temperature in degrees Kelvin and the frequency bandwidth. We will calculate an example in a minute. In communications engineering, people like to calculate with logarithmic values. So let's use the formula that gives us the noise power in dBm. We wouldn't be electronics unmessed if we didn't use a small Excel tool for the calculation. Of course, you can use this for your own purposes and you know you can find it in the download section below. It is very simple. As a default, there are even three examples in which the noise power and a few other values are calculated. <laughs> 
I just use that now. By the way, the second page of the tool is also very interesting because here you can evaluate the relation between the range and the bandwidth for any system. If that interests you, I will be happy to explain it later. Just comment me on that. Now coming back to our noise power. The temperature in our receiver shall be 27 degrees Celsius, which then corresponds to 273 plus 27 equals 300 degrees Kelvin. We take a Wi-Fi signal that can be transmitted with a bandwidth of 20, 40, 80 or 160 megahertz. Therefore, we calculate the noise powers for the different bandwidths. So, we see an increasing noise power as bandwidth is increasing. This reduces the sensitivity of the receiver because the received signal must be greater than the noise power. Unfortunately, this is the case and it ultimately prevents us from being able to achieve large transmission speed over large distance. But how do we actually get from bandwidth to transmission speed? Or to put it bluntly, from megahertz to megabit per second. And this is actually quite a complicated matter and I want to present it in a simplified way. It depends on the type of modulation we use. In order to transmit our bits, we have to modulate the information onto our carrier signal. With the technology commonly used today, we modulate the phase and the amplitude of the carrier signal. Examples of modulation modes are called BPSK, QPSK and 16 up to 256 QAM. BPSK has the fewest and 256 QAM has the most modulation states. If we can use the higher modulation modes, then we can transmit more bits per hertz of bandwidth than with the lower modes. However, higher modes require a high signal to noise ratio, i.e. a strong received signal, so that the information can be transmitted cleanly. At greater distances, the received signal becomes weaker, so the signal to noise ratio is smaller and our system therefore has to switch to modulation with fewer states. For example, from 16 QAM to QPSK. This significantly reduces the transmission speed, although the same bandwidth is still used. If we increase the distance even further, there will be a point at which the receiver sensitivity is no longer sufficient to get a sufficient signal to noise ratio. Not even with a lower modulation mode. The receiver's inherent noise is then too high again. Then the bandwidth needs to be reduced, for example from 40 MHz to 20 MHz to make the receiver more sensitive. However, this further reduces the transmission speed. In practice, you can actually experience something like this. Close to the base station, you get a transmission speed of more than 1 gigabit with the current radio standard. However, at some distance or behind a building, the transfer rate collapses to 10 megabit per second only. Incidentally, Wi-Fi is very similar to mobile communications. The switching of the bandwidth and modulation type is quite dynamic. I showed this in a previous video. Here we see the behavior of a Wi-Fi device that is switching between 40 and 80 MHz bandwidth. And it changes very often between the modulation modes which are indicated here by the numbers 1 to 8. This is a real system report. Incidentally, the Wi-Fi device was not moved. If it were in motion, then the range of modulation modes 
would be much wider and the device would certainly often switch to the 20 MHz bandwidth. Now you could say, ok, we have understood that the receiver sensitivity limits the range. But engineers have thought about how to improve the sensitivity of the receiver. There is a literally cool way to do it and a very clever way to do it too. You can cool the receiver. This is no joke. As we can see in our equation, the noise power increases proportionally to the absolute temperature in degrees Kelvin. So if we make the temperature very small, then the noise power will also be very small and the receiver sensitivity will be very high. This would simply move the red area further to the left. This method is actually used with receivers for radio astronomy where the receiver front end is cooled down to a few degrees Kelvin. Another method is to use multiple receivers in parallel. When the signals are added, the voltage amplitude of the signal increases, while the noise is only added up statistically. As a result, the blue signal curve shifts faster to the right than the red area, which is defined by the noise. The method becomes really clever when, for example, 1000 receivers are integrated on one chip. This can increase the sensitivity by a factor of almost 1000, which corresponds to 30 dB improvement. The set measures do not reduce the transmission rate. If you accept a reduction in the data rate, you can use another trick to increase the range significantly. A sequence of data is repeated multiple times. As a result, the sensitivity can be significantly increased. The effect is similar to the 1000 receivers. For example, if you repeat a data sequence 100 times, you can extract a signal from the noise that is almost 100 times weaker than the receiver's intrinsic noise. Incidentally, this corresponds to an SNR of minus 20 dB. This is achieved simply by superimposing the repeated signals on top of each other. A disadvantage of this method is that with 100 repetitions the transmission speed is of course reduced by a factor of 100. The effect is very similar to reducing the bandwidth by a factor of 100. The insights. I wanted to give you the background for the methods that I use to make a quick assessment of a system. I just look at what bandwidths, transmission power and modulation types are used. This allows me to immediately assess the performance. And it's the physics that we build on when we specify systems or when we want to predict the range of a radio system for example. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as I said, there are some examples on my channel on wireless range that might be worth checking out. Now stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.